you have service items, you have genes that serve as both a metaphor for genetics and as service clothes, dungarees, you have a slave quilt, and you have a gilded sewing machine. It's part of that impulse to lift away some of this idea of both the differences of race and the kind of racial oppression that black people in particular in this country have felt. And if so, why guild? I mean, there's clearly a juxtaposition, even in the placement of the objects, right? So you have a slave quilt, and in front of it, a gilded sewing machine. And then on the wall next to it, the instructions for a cape, which, by the way, this show is called Marvel. And we're talking about being able to elevate, right? For sure. To the superhuman or right? Superpowers. And so tell me, like, in this corner, what your intentions are in the conversation of elevating. And is elevating, are, do you see in any way that we are trapped in the commodification of our capitalist society that we live in? And so we're sort of bound to material in these really complex ways. And if so, then how do we use our superpowers to change it? I think your own superpower will emerge as you elevate, for starters. Um, and then I think that the systems that you're talking about, particularly the modernism, I think it generates, again, that kind of ripeness. <clears throat> and I think that that generates the more casual experience of the social agreements, the automatic things that we do, the built-ins. Our built-ins are like effed up. Our cultural built-ins. Our cultural built-ins are in bad shape and sick. It's not healthy. The things that we're generating, the things we're generating, I'm not, it's hard to put it into words. Like, I feel like I shouldn't have to say anything about that. That's not a casual thing. Like, I'm allowing you to interact and interface with that thing that's got real DNA in it. And I don't think that, more often than not, I think that these things get glossed over. They go fast. And we don't stop and have slow interactions. With the past? With ourselves, with each other. I think we have more interactions with ourselves than we need to be having, because those self those vacuous relationships with self just produce more separation. And the separation is what allows us <clears throat> as a humanity, as a species, to grow. It's the interactions that allow us to grow, painful as they may be. Without them, nothing occurs. It's just not the nature of things. I hope that creating conditions helps to serve that goal. I think that the goal that you're talking about is beautifully nuanced and sophisticated. And that kind of beautiful nuance and sophistication exists in all of us. I try to create conditions that hopefully sting a little bit. So you, but you have this playfulness. I mean, there's a Barbie back there which yes. you made with so, your daughter, so then, who is so, here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think even the cranes for, for Solange, there's even an element of playfulness about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this idea of like making it playful to make it less painful? I would say that I try to engage so that it is effective and useful. Those are my goals. Mm -hmm. We're going to go up. OK. Because when I think about social hierarchies, you know, we're back to the gilded. And these are, are those Air Jordans? Those are Jordan ones, yes. So that's an interesting conversation between the gilded Air Jordans, really the highest level of the gallery of your installation, next to a meditating Scotty Pippen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the impetus of these works it is gold plating. They come from the original piece was effigy for a new normalcy. Mm -hmm. And so 
I like the idea of spiritual traditions, religious traditions. You know, again, it's back to the social agreements, the things that we value. And so for me, I don't know that ignoring the things, the built-ins, I think sometimes playing with the built-ins like a ready-made. I don't have to reorient the audience. I don't have to re-signify an object. It's built in. People understand that as having a particular meaning. Gold is a transmitter of electrical energy. And so, yes, when you see me meditating on the beach in La Jolla and there are these waves rolling in, there's a spiritual component that I'm interested in. I try to have some fun with it. I try to play around with it. It's a game. You know, I mean, it's, sometimes I'm very literal. Sometimes I'm very metaphorical. But yeah, I do feel like it's a game that we get, we get to play this game of life. And so might as well make the game fun. It's a game. So by gilding something, you are saying that it has some... Value. Extra, also energy. Absolutely. Gold is a known transmitter, conductor. Of probably the best conductor of electrical energy. Well, I wouldn't want to confuse anyone, but I also wouldn't want to play myself. I'm not going to lend treasure to something that's been repugnant. But that's part of our very gene pool, the survival. But that's, a cho that's all choice. We're making these, that's all, that's the social agreement again. We're making these choices. Yes, yes, but we also have to look at the fact that there are these patterns, like that restroom sign and then North Carolina's restroom issues. Those mm -hmm. are patterns. Those are patterns of, oh, you're other and I'm this. And so the value system that, or the value that you're talking about, the consensus agreements that we put down in terms of value, wanting us to be aware of it. It's all these things have relationships to one another, relationships and patterns. Okay. okay, so that takes us to the love economy, which I think is the other big which powerful... Is, which is deplete right now. It's embarrassing to me. The things that I've tried to engage and talk about that I think maybe other people want to engage and talk about too don't get the kind of support that they need to get. It's an embarrassment. One of the things that we haven't discussed is materiality and technique. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that helps generate growth and understanding. When you or I or Todd or Chaz are walking down the street, people have more to work with than our epidural layer. If we invoke the love economy. If we evoke the th things within ourselves that allow us to get past the perceptions that we're locked into, that impulse to create other in terms of these love works, they are multiple things. They are paintings and castings. For me, as Edward pointed out, being born in the Middle East, they remind me very much of prayer rugs, the way that they're hung. They are prayers and memories. They are emotions. They are inverted so that we look at them as if we're behind them, right? And we're looking out. Can you talk to me about why you made that decision? Does that sort of being on the inside signify something or force us to see differently when we have to look at it as if we are inside? I think the nature of perception, or I think perception's nature, is slow. After a while, those things become nonverbal. The things that I need to work are nonverbal. Their behaviors, that are based on, you know, stimulation and cause and effect. These things need to be effective. If you're gonna be so linear, yeah, look at it. It's like, why is he trying to communicate that to me? Why is he trying to tell me that I'm trapped on the inside? Like, right, that was my question. Yeah. Yes. So why are we trapped on the inside? Why do you want us to be trapped on the inside? Because that's the only way I'll make you realize that there's more going on on the outside. Something outside of your perceptions is taking place is to let is to let you know that another perspective exists. I guess I guess that's my biology revealing itself. It's my that combination of all, both of these things re revealing itself to try to be you know to try to be useful. 
we can create this elite space, but we can't seem to get to that point where we stop doing this separation. It's an embarrassment. So I try to point to that as like, well, how, how we let ourselves get to the place at which our built-ins have become so sick. I, for better or for worse, have avoided my personage being a component of my work for a long time. I didn't comply with that control system. My work doesn't always happen here. Usually it happens after, out there. My work happens, hopefully, in, in, up here. Upon Most, reflection. Mostly, mostly, yeah. I think when it's done, it becomes physical, but the f initial experience, the initial kick, if you will, you know, it has to be this. That's how we, that's how we receive. We're visual creatures. That's how we understand, you know, and we're sensory. And so I have to be phenomenological in order for it to, in order to make it work. If it's not, I don't think it's as effective as it could be.